Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about the anatomy of the brain. First of all, you must know what is the anatomical position. So, when you hold a brain, we hold as a specimen of the brain and it has superior longitudinal fissure, also called longitudinal cerebral fissure that separates the one cerebral hemisphere from, from another cerebral hemisphere. The cerebellum is posterior. The brain stem is in front of the cerebellum and the superlateral surface is convex and brain stem has three components, the midbrain, pons, and middle of the gutter. And the medial surface has the corpus callosum here. Okay. It has the orbital surface in the inferior aspect. We have the orbital surface. This is horizontal. And on the inferior surface, this is the orbital part. This is the tentorial part. This separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum by tentorium cerebelli located here. Okay. So if you go to the lobes of the brain, what are the lobes of the brain? We have the frontal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. This is parietal lobe. This is occipital lobe. This is the temporal lobe. We have four lobes. We may add one more lobe that is called insula that is buried under the lateral sulcus. It is present in, at the floor of the lateral sulcus. When we retract the lateral sulcus, we get the insula. Insula is a cortex. It is developmentally, it is behind than that of the other part of the cerebral cortex. So its, its growth is less. It is covered by this developing part. It has granular part and agranular part. Its exact function is not known, but it is told that it is associated with taste sensation and vestibular function. And also for planning an action that is done by the insula, okay, for the planning and execution of a function. So we got four loops, frontal loop, it is in front of the central sulcus. Sulcus means depression, gyrus means elevation. We have a lot of sulcus and gyrus to accommodate more and more neurons in the cranial cavity. So central sulcus will get the on the supramedial border, actually just behind the midpoint of the frontal pole and the occipital pole will get the central sulcus. In front of the central sulcus, we'll get the precentral gyrus. Behind the central sulcus, we'll get the postcentral gyrus. Precentral gyrus is motor, postcentral gyrus is sensory. So we got that. Now we'll go to the here again surface superlateral surface, medial surface we have seen in our previous image, and the inferior surface. Four border, superomedial border, the superomedial border, and inferolateral border, and also we have the medial border, two part, middle orbital border, and we have also medial occipital border. Three pole, pole means the pointed part of the brain. This is the frontal pole, this is a temporal pole. This is the occipital pole. Three pole has three different blood supply. The frontal pole should get blood supply from the anterior cerebral artery. The temporal pole should get blood supply from the middle cerebral artery. The occipital pole should get blood supply from the posterior cerebral artery. So again, we have the frontal loop in front of the central sulcus. This is the precentral gyrus, postcentral gyrus. This part is the parietal loop, okay? And this posterior part is the occipital loop. We have the preoccipital notch around five centimeter in front of the temporal pole. We have the parietal sulcus that is around five centimeter. If we draw the line here, 
if we draw the line here, you get the occipital lobe here. There is the occipital lobe. This is the location of parietal occipital sulcus. This is the location of the periocipital notch. And the temporal lobe is below the lateral sulcus. This is lateral sulcus. That is the central sulcus. And this is the precentral gyrus. This is the postcentral gyrus. This is the lateral sulcus. This is the superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, inferior temporal gyrus. On the inferior surface, we will have the parahippocampal gyrus and the medial occipital temporal gyrus or temporal occipital gyrus and lateral occipital temporal occipital temporal gyrus or temporal occipital gyrus here. Okay, so on the medial aspect, we have the corpus callosum, that is a great commissural fiber. This is the great commissural fiber. It connects to cerebral hemisphere for coordination between two cerebral hemisphere. We have other commissural fiber like anterior commissure, like this. We have the posterior commissure. Okay, we have the hemulular commissure, and we have also the hippocampal commissure. So we have three types of fiber. One is commissural fiber, another is association fiber that connect the cerebral cortex of the each of one cerebral hemisphere. We have the projection fiber that project to the spinal cord through the brain stem. There is the projection fiber that are present in the white matter of the brain. Okay, these are cingulate gyrus and very important is the calcarine sulcus and area number here is the 17 according to Broadman. Okay, we got that. And this part, occipital lobe, we call it cuneus. That part, the parietal lobe, we call it precuneus. Okay, we are in the undersurface of the brain. This is our orbital surface. We have the olfactory bulb that pick up the olfactory nerve receptors from the upper one third of the nasal cavity that enters the cranial cavity through the cribriform plate of ethmoid bone and synapse with the mitral cell and top cell. Then olfactory bulb, we have the olfactory tract, olfactory stira, we have anterior perforated substance here and olfactory nerve will end up in the olfactory area of the telencephalon. Okay, so this is the only one sensation that does not go through the thalamus directly. Okay, this is the cranial nerve number one. Okay, then this is the cranial nerve number two, optic nerve. This is the optic chiasm. Here the nasal fiber crosses, temporal fiber don't cross. Okay, then here we'll get the boundary and part of the of the interpeduncular fossa here that contains the infundibulum, eversinarum, mammillary body, and posterior perforated substance bounded by the optic chiasm. And here is the optic tract here. And we have the this is the basis basis pedunculi composed of the cross cerebri and the substantia nigra of the midbrain, this midbrain area. Is the pons. This area is called interpeduncular fossa. Okay. There is the pons. This is the basilar sulcus. In our living body, the artery, basilar artery is present here. There is the basilar sulcus. This is the brain stem, midbrain, pons, middle oblongata. Middle oblongata has the pyramid, this elevated area, this pyramid that is due to the pyramidal fiber. Okay. And we have the olive laterally, we have the olive due to the presence of the inferior olivatory nucleus. Okay. And this is the temporal lobe of the brain. And this part is called uncus. This is the uncus. We got that. This is the orbital sulcus. This is the medial. This, this is called the gyrus rectus, this part. Okay. So before going there, we must know some of the 
cranial nerves here. So this is the first cranial nerve, second cranial nerve, third cranial nerve, we'll get that. This is the oculomotor nerve, third nerve, fourth nerve, the trochlear nerve. This is the only nerve that comes out from the posterior aspect of the midbrain. There is the, the, the trochlear nerve, that is the motor nerve. This is sensory, one, two, sensory. The third, fourth are motor. Fifth cranial nerve, this is the fifth cranial nerve. This is the sensory component of the fifth cranial nerve. This is the motor component. So it is a mixed cranial nerve, sensory, motor. We have the adjacent nerve, that is the motor cranial nerve, and it innervates the lateral rectus, you know that part. Okay, trochlear nerve innervates the superior oblique muscle. Okay, a lot of other extracular muscle, intraocular muscle is innervated by the oculomotor nerve. Okay, then we have at the at the medullopontine junction, we have the adducent nerve, then lateral to it. We'll get the seven cranial nerve, facial nerve, that is a mixed nerve. Then we'll get the eight cranial nerve, just lateral to that. That is also a that is a sensory nerve. Special there is a there is a purely sensory nerve, okay. Eight nerve. Ninth nerve will go along the posterior lateral sulcus. We have the anteromedial sulcus. We have the twelfth cranial nerve. That is the hypoglossal nerve. It innervates all the muscles of the tongue except the palatoglossus, which is innervated by the spine, which is innervated by the by the by the cranial root of the uh, accessory nerve via the vagus nerve. Okay, so we got the hypoglossal nerve that is in the anteromedial sulcus of the medulla oblongata. Okay, so that is present between the pyramid and the olive. So just behind the, behind the olive, we have the posterior lateral sulcus that contains the, the ninth, tenth cranial nerve, ninth and tenth cranial nerve that comes out of that place. Okay, and also the eleventh cranial nerve, and hypoglossal nerve is a bit anterior from the anteromedial sulcus. Okay, we got that. These are the cranial nerve. Okay, this is a section of the telencephalon. Okay, this section to identify the basal ganglia. What is ganglia? Collection of neurons in the central nervous system is called nuclei. But sometimes it is sometimes called it is ganglia, like that of the basal ganglia. Ideally, it should be basal nuclei. Ganglia means collection of neurons outside the central nervous system. But a lot of books use the word basal ganglia here. What are the components of basal ganglia? Basal ganglia com composed of the correct nucleus, the lentiform nucleus, that is the globus pallidus, and the putamen. Okay, it is also the part, the clostrum and the amygdaloid body. This basal ganglia plus subthalamic nucleus and the substantia nigra of the, of the midbrain that forms the extra pyramidal system. So any damage to this structure will have abnormal involuntary movement. Okay. Between the caudate nucleus and the putamen, Okay, this is the lentiform nucleus, these two putamen globus platus. We have the internal capsule, part of the internal capsule is here. Okay, so we have, these are the gray matter. Gray matter composed of cell body, the neuron cell body or perikaryon plus blood vessels and supporting cell, the neuroglia. This is the white matter that is inside the gray matter and it is composed of the axons and the neuroglia and blood vessel. The gray matter is more vascular than that of the white matter. And inside the white matter, we get some nuclei like basal nuclei. So white matter, gray matter. White matter does not contain cell body. It contains axon. Axon is myelinated, so its color is white. And axon myelination in the central nervous system is done by the oligodendroglia. In the peripheral nervous system, it is done by the swan cell. One oligodendroglia cell 
can myelinate around 60 to 70 adjoints. Okay. So we got that. The neuroglia, neuroglia, we have multiple neuroglia. We have the astrocyte, fibrous astrocyte, proplasmic astrocyte. We have the oligodendrocyte, we have the ependymal cell, and also we have the microglial cell. We have neuron here. These are mostly the multipolar neuron, like the pyramidal cell. Okay. We have also bipolar neuron on the spatial sense area, like the olfactory receptors of bipolar neuron. Other special sensation area, we have the bipolar neuron. Okay, so again, this is the caudate nucleus, lentiform nucleus. Okay, this is the internal capsule. This internal capsule is present between the caudate nucleus and lentiform nucleus. This is the lateral ventricle, anterior horn of the lateral ventricle of the brain. Again, this is the white matter. It doesn't contain cell body. It contains the adjuncts, neuroglia, blood vessels. Okay. This is a part of the lateral ventricle, posterior horn of the lateral ventricle. This is thalamus. Thalamus is the, is the major sensory relay station. Okay, so this is thalamus. One thalamus is connected to the other thalamus by the interthalamic adhesion. This is the choroid plexus. It is composed of capillary, pyramid, the capillary, pyamater, and the ependymal cell. It is the site of production of CSF. We have choroid plexus in our lateral ventricle, present in the third ventricle, present in the fourth ventricle. This is the corpus callosum. This is a septum pellucidum. Okay. The, this is the thalamus, the major sensory relay station. This is the hypothalamus that controls all the system of our body, like appetite, like the diurnal rhythm, endocrine functions, temperature regulation. Okay. Everything is controlled by the hypothalamus. This is the posterior pituitary. This is the anterior pituitary. Okay, that is the anterior pituitary is here. Posterior pituitary, this is the pituitary stock here. Okay, we have the mammillary body. Okay, part of the hypothalamus. And mammillary body is important. It is associated with, with memory. It is lost in case of chronic alcoholism. Okay, then we have the lateral ventricle. Third ventricle is a junction between the to the cephalon, okay, it is like a slit, one third ventricle, communication by means of interventricular foramina of Monroe, okay. Then from third ventricle, we are going to the fourth ventricle, there is between the cerebellum and the brainstem, okay. So that is present between the cerebellum and the brainstem, okay. So this is the fourth ventricle, okay. And this is the midbrain. Midbrain has, in the posterior aspect, we call it tectum. It contains the quadrigeminal plate, superior colliculi, inferior colliculi. One for vision, another for hearing purpose. It is related to the visual pathway and hearing pathway. This is the tegmentum here. In front of the tegmentum, we'll get the substantia nigra, then we'll get the cross cerebri. Okay, this is the fourth ventricle. Okay, this is the cerebellum. And this white matter in the cerebellum, we call it arbor vitae or the tree of the life. Okay, so again, we have the fornix here, septum pellucidum, corpus callosum. This is the cerebellum. Cerebellum is essential for maintenance of equilibrium, posture, muscle tone to have movement in right direction, right force, right extent. Cerebellum is connected to the midbrain. Okay. Cerebellum has lower part called tonsil. This part may be herniated to the vertebral foramen through the foramen magnum. We call it Arnold Chiari malformation. That may happen. Arnold Chiari malformation. 
okay this is again the cerebellum we have the anterior lobe and we have the posterior lobe we have the primary fissure here okay we have another horizontal fissure here the junction between two cerebral hemispheres is called barbus functionally cerebellum is divided again to the arcu cerebellum paleo cerebellum neo cerebellum depending on the fineness of the movement but its control is is ipsilateral and cerebellum is a site of brain tumor in children okay we have found the brain stem this is the pyramid and abducens nerve in our best the lateral leptus muscle okay we know that this is the corpora cavernous or the these are the superior colliculi inferior colliculi okay so and this is the pineal body that releases the melatonin okay that is also associated with reproductive function okay and also circadian rhythm along with the hypothalamus okay these four are called corpora quadrigemina okay superior colliculi inferior colliculi okay we have the section of the midbrain here if you section the midbrain we'll find out this is the tectum it should contain the superior colliculi inferior colliculi this is the cerebral aqueduct narrowest part of the cerebrospinal fluid passage and it may be blocked that may lead to hydrocephalus then we have the tegmentum here this is tectum tegmentum this is the substantia nigra it contains the dopamine in, in its neuron okay dopamine is lost in case of parkinson disease this is a cross cerebri so cerebral peduncle composed of cross cerebri substantia nigra and tegment we also may get the red nucleus here red nucleus here this is the blood supply of the brain that is very important to us yes the supramedial border and two finger below it is supplied by the anterior cerebral artery that is a branch of the internal carotid artery superlateral surface most of the part is supplied by the middle cerebral artery that is a branch of the internal carotid artery the occipital lobe plus the inferior temporal gyrus innervated by on the superlateral surface and also occipital lobe and the inferior surface most of the part is supplied by the posterior cerebral artery that is a branch of the basilar artery basilar artery is formed by the union of two vertebral arteries this is a circle of willis okay we have the basilar artery basilar artery is present in the basilar sulcus of the pons basilar artery is formed by the union of two vertebral artery vertebral arteries are branches of the subclavian artery okay we have some clinical note alzheimer's disease degenerative dementia of unknown cause in our brain in this patient in post mortem examination we'll find out neurofibrillary tangles amyloid body tau proteins okay as a whole brain will be atrophied in alzheimer's disease mostly the frontal lobe and temporal lobe is affected so there will be loss of memory plus loss of cognition epilepsy is a condition in which seizure occur on chronic basis it may be a complication of brain injury difficult delivery of the baby scar tissue formation in the brain there will be abnormal electrical circuit will develop periodically huntington disease or huntington disease degenerative autosomal dominant disorder usually affect the correct nucleus of the basal ganglia will have coriform movement in huntington's this is also behavioral change the patient is comparatively younger not very old is maybe up before up to the age of 35 most of the patient it run in the families parkinson disease degeneration disorder lack of dopamine from the substantia nigra of the midbrain there will be abnormal movement in parkinson disorder rigidity of the movement okay person has hesitation to start the movement slow stride stooping posture parkinson feature Anencephaly, non-development of the cranial vault in brain due to non-closure of the anterior neuropod. We should close around the 24th day. 
after fertilization okay then if it does not close then there will be no formation no brain formation and no cranial ball formation we have anterior neuropore posterior neuropore usually posterior neuropore closes around 27 day anterior neuropore closes around the 24 to 25th day neural tip formation neural tip is a is, is a form formed from the ectoderm okay by the induction way and neural neural tube will form the from the brain and it it will it will be the central canal of the spinal cord and the ventricular system of the brain okay around it we'll get the brain formation neural tube defects are anencephaly and spina bifida this may be prevented especially spina bifida by folic acid addition uh, by folic acid addition during pregnancy And that's all about the anatomy of the brain. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me. Please share the information with your friends and please support my channel. Please subscribe me and have a nice day. Bye now.